Okay, so David's going to get started while we continue fiddling with the projectors. So he's just going to talk about slides. If we can get slides back, cool if not. Uh, hi guys, uh, my name is David. I work with Rockspace, I'm a software developer. I've been there for about 14 months. Uh, I work in the marketing department, oddly enough, uh, to develop sites like Rockspace.com, uh, shopping cart, a variety of other web properties that we have. Um, you know, because we're on marketing and because it's Rackspace.com and it's like, you know, where, where most people actually interact with Rackspace, uh, we get some of the uh, benefits of being a major dedicated hosting company as well as one of the largest clouds in the world. Uh, so we get a pretty healthy budget and we have a lot of really awesome dedicated gear and a couple of data centers. And we've been living on that for, for quite a while. Um, it meets our needs, we can throw a whole bunch of stuff at it, which is, you know, it's, it's worked. Uh, but as we move forward, we've got you know, the open cloud, open stack, all these, these great things. I think it's time that we actually start migrating things like Rackspace.com to the public cloud to uh, kind of prove the public cloud to do a lot of really amazing things uh, that you just can't do with dedicated you know, I can stand up like a virtual appliance in a couple of minutes, stand up servers in a couple of minutes. Not quite like that when you got to get a new blank. Okay? Just doesn't work that way. Uh, so we've been doing that. It's, it's been really great. We're migrating individual applications one at a time. Uh, as we uh, started to push things out into the cloud, and really kind of like sort of dog food, essentially. Uh, it, the question has come down to first, you know, automation. How do we enjoy the benefits of automation on that? Scaling, right? Deployment, all these, all these great things. Uh, so we started to ask ourselves what we want to use, you know, chef or puppet, right? Everybody comes to that question at some point. Which one do you use? The open stack now, it seems like Chef is really kind of like taking the press I mean, it's most of the major designs, especially for the private cloud download, tends to include like a Chef server, so it's kind of out of the box. Uh, but for me, I decided to go with Puppet. Um, really for two reasons. One, that, uh, that learning virtual machine makes all the difference, guys. I gotta tell you, just downloading it, learning it, I mean, as soon as I wanted to go check out Puppet, learn more about it, I had a virtual machine fired up, ready to go, and I was writing Puppet. Damn, Puppet Beast looks great. This is awesome, right? Really worked out well. So it was an easy, uh, easy path of actual education to, uh, to move forward. Uh, second, the reason that I really like it, not so much in comparison to Chef per se, but I really dig the, the DSL. I think it looks cool. I think the syntax is cool. I think it just makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's inviting. You know, it, it, plus it's a DSL, a lot of people um, aren't really so used to the DSL per se. Uh, so I think it's an interesting uh, way to get people like a real world context of using DSLs and all that. And then, you know, uh, they can sort of see how those things can be constructed in functional languages like Python. Um, so, uh, that being said, I've played a lot of the, with a lot of things. Uh, and one of the interesting things that uh, Rackspace is doing now is the developer advocacy. Um, really building SDKs for OpenStack, doing a lot of like, DevOps type of education, etc. So that's what, kind of what I've been doing here. Uh, the, the, this particular uh, topic on, on Drupal and how to automate the puppet is, is this real, very, very simple. Uh, simple uh, puppet module, not on the forge, girls. Uh, <laughs> Girls are kind of sweat me about why it's not on the porch, or up on the porch and I actually don't have a good uh, reason why not. I mean, hey, if it sucks, put it out there. Let them confirm it or deny it. I don't know. I probably should put it out there. I'm going to use that markdown. Goodness, that was presented earlier. Um, but it's, it's real simple. Uh, I want to take this approach uh, to try to teach people how they can do things, how they can start to leverage automation and do things individually uh, on themselves. Uh, with things like Puppet. So, first things first, uh, a Drupal developer is kind of interesting because they're really just a PHP developer. And a lot of times PHP developers aren't really actually all that savvy. They don't LAMP. They're pretty awesome LAMP, right? But I know developers that don't even use the command line. Okay? No, no, they don't, you know, just trying to get them to, you know, just use that. It's difficult enough. So, I'm trying to take the approach of, you know, just making it very simple to digest and show how you can use kind of like a pure puppet uh, approach to kind of handle the application itself, how to deploy it, how to 
keep the get things running in a way that's uh, not really all that intimidating. It's actually kind of fun. Uh, so the basic tools, right? You can Ubuntu, you can Apache, you can MySQL. In this case, I uh, recommend a cloud database, of course, database as a service, make it easy, right? Or do I go and mess with that one? Somebody else is already taking care of it. It's kind of automatically you know, replicated. High availability. PHP is real nice to have it. You need it for Drupal. And then a, a couple of the other things, uh, a lot of people don't really know about uh, things like Varnish or things like, like tuning Apache. Um, so things like that can be actually integrated in, you know, pre-store for best practices. And it's not something they really have to think about again by leveraging the public model itself. Um, on my machine, I actually had a cloud server and cloud database so I can fly it up. So walk through, but we'll make it guys. So first things first, nothing to it. Walk in. Update. There you go. Sorry, no, no diagrams, no motherships, guys. Just uh, the standard, right? Standard packages, get that going. Install Puppet. I mean, where are you going to start, right? Just get it. The nice thing is uh, installing this and installing the back here. A couple of the other things uh, that, that make it all run, Ruby, etc. Install Git. Why not? Right? I mean, hey, this whole thing's probably going to be under version control. If you're, you know, you're still using some version, it's okay. It's okay. Git's a little bit better. Uh, and you know, so I have a simple uh, module that's held within a repo. You can just clone it in. Download it, real simple. Standard application. It only contains just the main sites folder. It doesn't actually have all of Drupal core installed, which is a little hefty. No point. Plus, you know, you don't want to be locked to a very specific snapshot. Uh, some people do that, maintain the entire Drupal core within their repository. Probably not the best idea. There's, there's some other ways to do it. Um, just maintaining the code that, that you affect and leaving things out. Uh, dependency management, things like uh, the Composer, uh, make that a lot better. But in this case, it's actually centered around an entire puppet-based approach uh, where you would just decouple, you would have like, just your actual uh, site files contained as part of this module. And then uh, you, you, you leverage puppet to actually do the install of Drupal for you in a decentralized fashion. Um, and this approach right here, once again, this isn't actually on the Drupal Forge. Uh, and I wanted to take this approach so that you just simply copy the module into the folder. It's just that simple. It's where it goes. It's all that's going to happen anyway. But a little bit of hand holding on this approach to show them how that would actually work. And then we start with the applies. Um, I didn't go with a grand install of everything, you know, install a lamp. You know. I wanted to go step by step. And even then, this entire tutorial is only nine steps. So you know, one step at a time to make it, you know, easy. I find that if uh, in tutorials, people will do a hundred steps if it means that it'll work. Okay. And they get it down to like five or six steps, but if it doesn't work, they run into something they're in trash. Well, no. so in the last one, you know, somebody installing Apache, real easy, package, file, service, standard stuff. Uh, the only addition is in this case, I, I enable uh, mod, read, uh, mod rewrite using uh, A2 VN mod. Oh, you guys, yeah, thank you. Uh, real simple to show that you know the, the, the package file service pattern as well as it execute. Something that's common and that I can be on me. Uh, next is PHP. I really wish I got to show this one because it's a one liner, guys. I mean, it's just a piece of cake, right? It, you, even easier, uh, it, you know, it's actually almost shorter than the actual you know, package manager installation command. So that's always really fun. I mean, thank you guys for that. The array based notation is sweet. Uh, next is installing Drupal core. I, I use a real simple technique in this approach. Uh, I install it to opt. I create a symlink to the most recent version that's downloaded, and the, the application simply references it in the include path inside the Apache V host. Uh, you guys, uh, please check it out. It's on, it's on my uh, uh, GitHub repo. But it's in, it install, installs in a central location, sets up the symlink. It is an example of a real simple, like a variable usage. It's a Drupal version variable, so they can change that at any time when the update does it. Uh, next thing is the actual uh, the, the Drupal app. I don't know how many of you guys have ever installed the Drupal application. Uh, but there's a little bit of overhead, and in particular, uh, 
modifying some permissions, creating a, a, a folder, copying a file. Uh, real simple, pretty rudimentary stuff. But this takes care of it. It's automated. It's, it's part of the overall package uh, or module itself. So, uh, in this step, you know, you would go and run it. You can go back and look at the codes, actually see that it's just some very, very simple uh, executing threads. And that's it. At that point, you can go visit your server. It'll, uh, it'll all be done. You know, it'll take you to the installation panel, and it'll start prompting you with things like you know, your database credentials, which in this case could be a, a cloud database, which is one of because it's already set up and ready to go. Uh, then you can complete the installation process and it's available. Uh, so at this point, uh, it's interesting to talk about how utilizing Puppet can aid development itself. Um, you know, first of all, you've got the application stack, you know, under version control with your code together. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, I'd love to, to, to debate it, get you know, your ideas of best practices. Uh, in this particular uh, module, the idea was to store the application file under the files directory of the module. So it's actually kind of wrapped within the Puppet module itself. Probably the application is really tightly tied to its own configuration management. Uh, it's probably not the best design characteristic, but it was interesting. It was an interesting experiment to, to try out. Um, one thing that's really nice, the whole thing is extremely small. Right? Small smile, file size, doing the, the, the clones on the last piece of cake. You know, one of the other reasons that we, uh, we decoupled uh, Drupal core out of the whole thing, we let it manage the download, the background. As far as deployment is concerned, um, it's really interesting to be able to have a system where you can do kind of like a, this fire and forget type design, right? But where if you're leveraging something like Load Balancer, you can just you know have these rolling deployments where you fire up a brand new machine, it's configured, the app is running there, you can do your smoke testing or your acceptance testing, whatever, then you just kind of just add it into Load Balancer and take it out. And, you know, the fact that you can just go essentially run a one command really when it comes down to it if you want to, that makes it very interesting for deployment instead of uh, getting into uh, deployment systems like uh, Capistrano, people use things like Webistrano and other items, or um, things like continuous uh, delivery, continuous integration type approach. Um, and this approach is a little bit easier to digest, it's not quite as sophisticated, um, you know, which is nice, it's simple, simple is easy. Um, also, in terms of deployment, it's nice to know the configuration itself, that what the dependencies, the different PHP extensions, etc., are, are actually uh, contained within the configuration under version control. So if I needed to add a new uh, extension for whatever reason, I could document that it's part of commit. You know, it's all seen. It becomes de facto documentation of the changes of that application over lifetime inside of version control, which is kind of nice. But, you know, a lot of times people don't use any kind of automated configuration management. It's either not documented or poorly documented or it's, you know, whatever. Whatever happens, a word file. Um, you know, I don't want to do that. It's nice to kind of blow it all together. Um, now, in terms of automation, it's great. You know, because Puppet is taking care of you, are not worried about the, the sysadmin stuff. And this, is the, this gets more into, like, the spirit of DevOps, right? What, what is happening with DevOps? Um, at least from the developer perspective, a lot of people have asked me what to, to, to define DevOps. I personally like to think of it as the developer going into the system admin role instead of the system admin role going into development. But that's me. Um, the automation of being able to have you know, a system like Puppet create the entire application stack and do it in a dependable way that doesn't like, respond to email, just like a system admin doesn't respond to email. Right? I mean, it's just <laughs> nice to have some, you know, Puppet did it, and he did it good. Right? So, and that's it, you don't have to worry about the uh, politics of it all. Um, and the nice thing about the automation is once you get into automation, especially in the cloud, say like the Rackspace cloud, now you're here, you're into automation. What other things can you automate through the SDKs? Can you automate, you know, uh, registering your nodes with the cloud DNS? You know, automatically add itself to a load balancer. I mean, you can get into other aspects of automation. Like that they're really great, you know, you're not used to having them, you're used to like having the, the white box under your desk, you know, you don't get access to cool things, like load balancers, right? 
But here it's actually, you know, has physical load balances, right? I mean, I do, you know, those are, those take a while to get stood up. You know, I can stand up the load balance quick, guys, quick. Just by being actually automated, getting into the cloud and just changing, you know, where it is that I do things, I get access to so much more. Um, and speaking of automation, once you get into this life cycle, now I've done just enough to get Drupal running, literally, the bare minimum, which has its advantages as well. But now that I've got automation for supporting the entire application, I can take it a step further and I can add in varnish, right? Why not take it a step further and do an HTTP accelerator, get some cache in, reuse that server. I mean, if you've got a dedicated virtual machine that's just running one application, it may not necessarily be leveraged to its full extent. So you might want to maximize those per hour charges. Install an HTTP accelerator, get some, uh, get some cache in, some reverse proxy action, and a lot of cool things out there. Um, and so I get to show this off as a bit of a bonus uh, for people that you know haven't really played with Puppet or, or played with uh, you know a little more advanced Drupal development. Um, so this is provided. Um, so the next steps um, in terms of the way that this uh, tutorial goes, is, you know, ask some simple questions about you know I went step by step, one class at a time, very procedural fashion, but. You know, I challenge the, the people that have follow us, you know, could they think of a way of combining these into a single class, right? Um, you know, to, to learn a little bit more about it. Could they learn about things like Vapor and tie in, you know, this public module to actually, you know, become, become part of the provision package, um, which is actually pretty cool. It works really well. It's, it's fine. There's a lot of tutorials on how to do that. Um, and last, I mean, Configuring things like deployment or backup, right? Cloud backups or uh, configuring things like cloud load balancers or things like cloud monitoring and monitoring as a service. You know, a lot of these things that are just really aren't available in dedicated environments, right? Or they're, they're very difficult, or you know, they're costly. And actually utilizing automation as a means to get into a virtualized infrastructure, to get into the cloud per se, is, is nice. It makes a big difference. I mean, and you can even uh, strategically do it in a fashion where you know you use Puppet to configure your dedicated hardware and ways to actually perform migration, uh, virtualized infrastructure. Um, there's really a, kind of, a lot of amazing things that you can do by just going uh, to automation, just using things like configuration management. Um, and that's uh, that's about it. Anybody have any questions? You got a question? But yes, sir. No, You guys ready to go drink? Come on. We have a demo first. Oh, you have mobile drinking? I can do that. I don't need the slides. Not a single question. I think everyone's getting tired. Oh. Yeah. Thanks, guys.